club! We finally have the Golden Enclaves, the Skullamance of Book 3. If you remember from my review of Book 2, there's a terrible cliffhanger at the end, and so we have all been dying, dying impatiently waiting for Book 3. It's here, the end is here, I've read it, uh, I've digested it, and now I'm going to review it for you. P part one, if you're already a fan and you just want to know what to expect in book three, then this part's for use. If you are new to Skullamance, stay tuned. I'll tell you about the Skullamance in just a minute. But here you go. Book three. Uh, what did I think? Are you going to enjoy it? Was it worth the wait? Am I satisfied? Yeah! Well, let's see. Mostly. There's a really significant but I'm going to tell you about. It has to do with content. After that terrible, no good, very bad cliffhanger at the end of book two, um, I and the rest of fandom were super relieved to finally get our hands on book three so we could like pull our friends off of the cliff. Book three picks up right where book two left off, like literally at the end of um, like one sentence and the next sentence. Book two ends, book three begins, literally just like that. If you remember, book one and two did the same thing. So it's just like that. So book three picks up quite literally where book two left off and quickly we head off into the wide magical world that we've heard so much about during the previous books but never got to see. I enjoyed the mystery of book three. I enjoyed the unexpected twist, the big reveals. I bet you're going to enjoy all of that too. All of the things that we love from, from book one and book two are inside. The magic, the monsters, the world building, the snark. Even the ending was mostly satisfying. Significant, but here's the thing that um, I had a hard time with, and you might too, so just heads up. The, the romance gets really wonky. So if that's part of what's important to you, you might just want to mentally prepare yourself for it. Um, you, might, you might end up drop kicking this one across the room. I don't know what you're going to do, but there's a completely, an, a completely unexpected and very, very out of character sexual relationship between two main female characters in book three. I was shocked to discover, honestly, because that's how unexpected and out of place it was. And even after a month or a couple months now that I've since I've read it, I'm still trying to get my head around what was it even there for? Go read the other reviews. I'm not the only one who's feeling confused. I can't explain why it was there, what purpose it served. It was just super out of place. It was unnecessary. And honestly, it just... It's tainted the whole story for me. Uh, other than that, it, it was a lot of fun and it had a great ending. So anyway, do take that, what, take that um, how you want. That's what you can expect from book three. Okay, are you new to the Skullamance? You're uninitiated, you've never heard of it, you're curious. <clears throat> well, here's what you'll want to know. Book one is called A Deadly Education. That is where we are introduced to a wonderfully imagined world from the endlessly impressive mind of the author, Naomi Novik. The Skullamance is where the world's wizard family send their children for training. Except this isn't like that other wizard world that we know about. Like Harry Potter would have gotten eaten alive, literally, in the Skullamance. This isn't comfy Hogwarts, where every meal is a feast, there's always a warm fire, your bed is preheated, good friends are all around. No. No. Inside the Skullamance, it's like Hunger Games times Lord of the Flies times HP Lovecraft. The food might be poisoned, one, one wall of your dorm room opens to the endless void, and there are floor drains on the floor everywhere for ease and cleaning up after all the spilled guts. The kids with the best alliances and the most friends are the safest. The loner kids who don't have much to offer? Well, they're the low-hanging fruit, the scary things that roam the dark corners want to munch on. The only way out? Survive until senior year so you can sprint through a gauntlet of terrifying monsters to get to the exit doors. That's literal. Now. If they only had a budding dark sorceress powerful enough to get everyone out of out uh, safely. Hmm. Book two, The Last Graduate, picks up again exactly where a deadly education left off, like the very next sentence. The newly minted seniors have to figure out how to get themselves out of the school without being melted, flayed, drained, dismembered, murdered, or thrown into the endless void. The whole experience is as harrowing as you can imagine. 
and the story kept me on my on the edge of my seat all the way to the heart-stopping climax. As with a deadly education, <clears throat> we experienced the entire narrative through the eyes and mind of the deliciously snarky, many-layered, and perfectly named, I might add, Galadriel, aka L. She's the super powered but doesn't want anyone to know it hero of our story. And I am like in love with her character, her char her story arc. Um, this creepy story actually found a way to pull my heartstrings as Elle grew into her relationships, became comfortable with who she is. Heads up, like I said, book two, it ends with this aforementioned, aforementioned killer cliffhanger. So make sure you have book three ready to go and you don't have to live these months of torture like those of us who didn't have book three ready to go. For the content conscious among us, you'll want to know that there's quite a lot of the four letter kind of expletives. There's plenty of creepy monster violence. And there's some sexual content in this book. In book two, it's a pretty significantly spicy scene that is enough that it moves it firmly out of the reach of young adult and into new adult. Uh, new adult means to me, young adult means accessible to like teenagers under 18. Um, new a, new adult NA means over 18. So that's where this that's where this series is. In book two, that scene, it starts on page 340. If you just want to know where it is, so you can skip it, that's where it is. It's on page 340. Or maybe you just want to head straight to it, whatever. Uh, in book three, there are three instances of that same type of spicy sexual content, including those two, as I mentioned, very uncomfortably out of place scenes involving two female characters. Uh, <clears throat> if you can handle the content, the Skull Immense really is a lot of fun. It's best for 18 and up. Um, this is, this was uh, the Golden Enclaves. The series is done now. Happy reading, everyone.